हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द ट्रैक्टर हेडोन केमिस्ट्री क्लासेस सो गाइस दिस इज माय फिफ्टींथ लेक्चर ऑन ट्रांजिशन मेडल ऑर्गेनो मेटालिक केमिस्ट्री एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर इन माय लास्ट लेक्चर आई हैव कंप्लीटेड द कार्बिन कॉम्प्लेक्सेस ट्रांजिशन मेडल कार्बिन कॉम्प्लेक्सेस एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक द ट्रांजिशन मेडल कार्बाइन कॉम्प्लेक्सेस ओके अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर योर कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन राइट एज वेल एज योर एकेडमिक कोर्सेस सो इफ यू रिमेंबर यू आर कार्बीन सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इफ यू नो द कार्बाइन मीन्स वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द कार्बाइन इट शुड इट इट विल द कॉम्प्लेक्स विल हैव द मेटल ट्रिपल बॉन्ड कार्बन ओके अलॉन्ग विद यूर आर ग्रुप और इट मे यूर मेटल ट्रिपल बॉन्ड कार्बन हाइड्रोजन ओके सो दिस ट्रिपल बॉन्ड एक्चुअली शोज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द कार्बाइन सो हाउ वी कैन रिमेंबर द नेचर ऑफ द फिशर कार्बाइंस एंड द शॉक कार्बाइंस सो इट्स क्वाइट ईजी आई एम गिविंग यूर ट्रिक सो ट्रिक इज जस्ट लाइक दैट से यू कैन रिकॉल यूर कार्बीन्स राइट यू कैन रिकॉल यूर फिशर कार्बीन्स ओके एंड देन यू कैन रिकॉल यूर शॉक कार्बीन्स सो यूर फिशर कार्बीन्स वॉज सिंगलेट and your shrock carbene was doublet sorry it was triplet not doublet so you can write triplet here okay now trick is that add one to it so if you if you go for the fischer carbines you simply add one to it if you add a one to the singlet it will give you a doublet and if you add one to the triplet it will give you the quadrate so you should remember this thing okay your carbine uh, fischer carbine is doublet and your shock carbine is the quadrate okay so this is how you can remember the things this is uh, quite easy actually okay so now say what is the meaning of this uh, doublet and triplet so for this first of all you should know actually this thing Say I am putting margin over there, just like that. So now I am drawing the carbine. Say you are having metal in the center, and then you are having this carbine. I am putting R. See when it is carbine, it simply means this is actually sp hybridized. Okay, so this carbine is actually your sp hybridized. You should know this thing. it is sp hybridized so what it can have actually so it will have this sp orbital and this sp orbital will have a pair of electron okay this is sp orbital and then you may have your another two unhybridized p orbital i'm writing in that manner and i'm putting say one electron here so this is the condition you should know and uh, the important thing is this is actually sp hybridized so generally it is sp z because it comes first to overlap okay and this lone pair can uh, be anywhere it could be on px it could be on the py it will not make any difference okay this is the situation now here you are having your metal okay and this metal will have say lobes so what i can do i can write little bit away from that carbon so that the overlap is quite clearly visible say this is your metal okay and this metal orbital d orbital it is having the single electron over there okay and then say it is also having a pair of electron here and then you see the empty orbitals okay this is something very very important so uh, what can see these are the d orbitals of the metal you should remember this thing so how the bond formation would occur in that case so first of all you can see this can overlap with this okay and when they overlap they actually form this pair so it's a bond but it is forming by the lateral bond so it's a pi bond okay and what can happen the lone pair which is present on this uh, carbine carbon it can be donated to the empty orbital since it is uh, forming by the donation and it is head on overlapping so this bond is your sigma bond 
and another pi bond which you can form this electron pair which is present on the metal d orbital it can be donated to the empty p orbital whether it could be px or the py but in case it is py so it will form another pi bond because again it is forming by sideways overlap so if you if you know the nature of the transition metal carbides so you should write in that manner metal it is forming this sigma bond with the carbon and then you are having the two pi bonds since it is sp hybridized so it has linear structure in that case and then you may have your another ligands attached to it so this is the picture okay right and in that case you can see uh, this uh, this carbine is actually what it is monohepto it is monohepto so what is the meaning of the monohepto its hepticity is actually one only and it's a three electron donor it's a three electron donor and you know uh, your nitrosyl no is also a three electron donor i already told you that nitrogen can donate one or three electron depending upon its uh, linear or the uh, band shape okay so it is three electron donor you should know now if you want to know the multiplicity of this carbine complex so i am uh, giving you the multiplicity for this one so how you can go for the multiplicity so i am writing here multiplicity and that multiplicity you know it is 2s plus 1 and here in that case 2 into half plus 1 that will give you the 2 that is why it is doublet. So, why this half is here because only uh, one unpaired electron you see here only this particular one if you, if you know this electron pair which is there it is only uh, singly occupied right this orbital so this will have the plus half of the spin when this will have the plus half of the spin if you put in this particular formula total spin then it will give you a doublet this is something very very important okay now if you want to know about the schrock carbines right so uh, you can uh, you can make your schrock carbines also so how you how we can draw the schrock carbine say i am having my metal here and my metal is having say one unpaired electron over there and then this is one of the orbital uh, this is another orbital and this is another d orbital so you this is whether it is d x y d y z or z whatever ok. So, all these will have the single electron say in that case you see one electron is here and another electron is here and of course you can draw in that manner so these are the different d orbitals okay uh, this this diagram has given in the pic, uh, in the uh, in every book actually you can go there and say this is your carbine which is r okay and you know in that case one electron will present in this sp another electron is present here okay and then your unhybridized orbitals just like that okay so one electron is present here i can write in that manner and another so three electron you are having so this will actually and this metal orbital will also actually having the lobes in that manner so they will actually overlap so this will form a sigma bond so this is a lateral overlap this will form the pi bond and this is another lateral overlap this will again form the pi bond okay so in that case if you know the multiplicity see it is also monohepto this shock carbon is also monohepto it's a three electron donor so if you want to know the spin multiplicity spin multiply city so this would be 2s plus 1 since three unpaired electrons are there you need this one two and three okay so to make it clear what i can do i can give the same spin however after combination actually they will 
form in that manner the electron pair would in the orbitals would be like that so 2 3 unpaired electrons times 1 by 2 plus 1 okay that will give you 4 so it is a quadrate okay so this is how you can write in that manner so this is these, uh, these are the important features which you should know now if you want to know little further about that okay then the important point is that your fisher carbide fisher carbides and here i am writing your schrock carbides right your fisher carbides are electrophilic in nature electrophilic right and your schrock carbides they are nucleophilic in nature so what is the meaning of that the carbon in the <coughs> fisher and the schrock carbides actually as uh, electrophilic and nucleophilic respectively okay so this is something very very important and then you may have another feature say this was your point number 3 now you are having the point number 4 the fisher carbines will involve middle and late transition metals as we did in case of your uh, transition metal carbenes okay and your metal should be in the low oxidation state metal in low oxidation state okay and it is paramagnetic paramagnetic why because it is having one unpaired electron now moving to this one uh, this is nucleophilic and it will have your early transition metals early transition metals it involves shock carbines involve the early transition metals and metals would be in the high oxidation states metal in high oxidation state and it is also paramagnetic in nature because it is having three unpaired electrons three unpaired electrons so magnetic moment would be higher in that case in case of the schrock carbines you can calculate it okay and in that case the magnetic moment would be lower so these are the little things which you should know about the carbine complexes also i hope uh, this introduction is uh, enough for your any examination now you we can go for the preparations or the synthesis synthesis of the fisher and the schrock carbides so a very a simple see uh, in 1973 actually schrock was uh, designed to prepare uh, to synthesize uh, actually uh, uh, fisher designed an experiment in which he want uh, that substituted carbene complex okay so he took the metal carbonyls right and carbene och3 so it's a fisher carbene guys okay it's a fisher carbene fisher carbene how we can identify the fisher carbene i have already told you this hetero atom is there and this pi acceptor ligands are there okay this is how hmm? and he treated this with lewis acid bx3 right and his plan was just like that to make this particular compound metal double bond carbon x and r so what he wanted to do actually he wanted to substitute this methoxy group with the halogen so this was his plan but it didn't happen actually when he when when he when he did this exper uh, experiment so this product he actually didn't get so what what he got at that time so he got a, another thing which is metal triply bonded carbon and this r is here and then rest of the 
carbonyls. So, this is not here carbon is already tetravalent. So, this metal is having this carbonyl another carbonyl okay, and then another carbonyl another carbonyl and trans to the alkyne position halogen is there. Okay. So, it is a serendipitous type of the uh, discovery. Okay. So, he wanted to something else, but he got this particular one. This is how serendipitously he made uh, this carbine complexes. Okay. And uh, for your knowledge, this metal could be anything, right? This because it is uh, the Fischer type of the carbine, so it could be your chromium group. Okay. And your halogens could be your chlorine, bromine or iodine, it could be anything and your alkyl group could also be anything which is methyl, ethyl or even phenyl. So, this is how he made, but the mechanism is not a very certain mechanism, but I will uh, try to give you the mechanism how actually it had happened. So, for mechanism you can see here. So, if I am giving you the mechanism, so this was sorry, say so this was my 5 carbonyls along with the metal, and this is OME and this is R. So, 2 lone pairs are over there on the oxygen, and metal is in low oxidation state, that means the d orbital will have the extra electrons on it. So, it is again electrons are there. So, you know this part is what base, it is an electron donor. So, you can call it as Lewis base okay. and what he did? He treated this with B x 3. So, I, I can write B x 3 in that manner B x 2 and x and you know this is what? This is Lewis acid. So, basically the acid base reaction took place in that case. So, how the reaction can happen in that case? You see the electron pair on the oxygen will grab on the electron deficient boron okay, because it is Lewis acid and what will happen? This will move as the leaving group x negative and he took two of this okay. and when the reaction had happened. So, you will have carbonyl 5 times along with the metal okay. electron pair already there on the d orbitals of the metal this is carbon and here O Me and now this oxygen will bear this O x 2 with a positive charge over there because one of the lone pair of the oxygen this oxygen gets consumed in the formation of the bond with the electron deficient species okay. and that carbon is having R. Okay. So, this species actually resulted okay. and after that what had happened? See this electron pair can come here and this electron pair will go to this one and then you will have here compound in that fashion carbonyl 5 times metal with triple bond. Okay and then you are having your R in the form of this salt that is B x 4 negative. Okay. And see th there is no problem in that because uh, we took the uh, B x 3 twice okay. that is why this B x 4 negative is here this you should know and after that what can happen this species can lose a carbonyl from here okay when it loses carbonyl from here then one of the halogen actually will take the place of the carbonyl this is something very very important okay and your product would be like that metal now it is triple bond carbonyl and alkyl group is here so this is one co this is second co okay so, this is 
third CO, this is fourth CO, only four CO is there and one of the halogen will occupy this particular position which is X. So, if you focus on the position of the X and this triple bond, so it is trans to alkyl, it is trans to alkyl. So, you should uh, remember this particular point. Okay. Whenever this halogen will actually substitute one of the carbonyl, here actually the condition is like that all carbonyls are here actually, right? All uh, see if all nitriles are there, then your X can substitute uh, one of the carbonyl or the nitriles, and this X would be placed at trans to this one, uh, this alkyne. Why? Because carbines have very high trans effect very high trans effect. So, if you do not know what is the trans effect, how it operates, what are the theory involved in it, I have made the extensive lecture series on the coordination chemistry. You can go through uh, my coordination chemistry playlist and you can find uh, your trans effect, theories of the trans effect and what is the trans effect. In the square planar complexes, I have explained and I am also, gi and I'm also giving you the link in the description here. Okay. See, at, uh, you can see at the uh, right top corner in the information bar. Uh, the link is blinking, you can go through if you want. Okay. So, this is how you can uh, synthesize uh, this uh, carbine complexes. Right? And, uh, so, in that case, see uh, uh, what can happen, you, you will remember uh, the few things here. Say for example, I am calling this reactant as E okay, and this as B and this as C and this final product as D this is something very very important now guys the important thing is that please remember this particular point and the point is just like that if i replace one of the co ligand right if any one of the cf say if, if i replace this ligand uh, with say phosphine ligand like pme3 which is having which is already having the electron pair over there okay then your product in the reaction would be the C, the cationic complex, right? This is your cationic complex, cationic complex. Okay, so this is something very very important. What is the meaning of that? Instead of taking this CO five, if you have this particular complex, say for example, metal double bond carbon OME, and say this is your R and then these are the carbonyls attached to it and then say you are having this PME and PME. So, if you do the same reaction like you if you put the BX3 then your final product would be this particular one the reaction will not go further if this phosphorus base ligand is there right. So, this is something very very important which you should know actually. Now, see uh, after that uh, Schrock also designed the experiment and he actually made some other complexes. So, in 1978 only, in 1978 what Schrock did? So, Schrock actually took this complex right? and here this is cyclopentadienyl and say this is your double bond. So, it is not good to actually write in that manner because it should have the angular structure. So, this carbon is here, this hydrogen is here and this is the alkyl group okay. and say this is these are the two chlorines attached to it. So, this is chlorine, this is chlorine. So, this is Schrock carbon. How you can identify the Schrock carbon? because this tantalum is the early transition metal okay, and it is in the high oxidation state also and you see this carbon is connected with the hydrogen and R that is sigma donors are there. So, it is a Schrock carbene and what Schrock did in that case, he took this ligand PH 3 P double bond CH 2 okay, and when he performed this experiment, he got this compound. This is C p, this is triple bond carbon, 
this is r over there okay and say this is your one of the chlorine okay this is something very important how it had happened actually see the electron pair this double bond it is electron rich so what it can do it can grab this hydrogen as the proton and this will shift over there okay when this will grab in that case so you will have pph3 ch3 cl so this species you will have as the by product okay and after that you have also taken in that case say 2 of pme3 you have taken this one so what can happen this pme3 the electron pair it can attack on this tantalum because it is in high oxidation state when it is in high oxidation state that means it is electron deficient and electron can be donated to the tantalum so you can form this compound carbon triple bond c r this is cp cyclopentadienyl anion and then you are having your pme3 and then again you are having your p me3 of course trans to this one and then you are having your chlorine in that manner you can write okay see however if you if you see the textbook so they actually straight forward uh, made this particular compound by using this one however it is not see this reaction happens in all the way in single step however it is not right to actually show you the individual steps but for your better understanding i have explained the reaction in the different steps so schrock actually in 1978 synthesized this carbide with the early transition metal in the high oxidation state so you should remember this is in high oxidation state hos i am writing for this one okay so this is how you can prepare this now uh, there are various method to uh, prepare these uh, carbines also so shrock actually did the various things actually so after that in 1980 see uh, in 1980 see this reaction the previous reaction you see here which is this one right uh, th this reaction this reaction is actually alpha deprotonation reaction i forgot to write this is alpha deprotonation reaction this is alpha deprotonation why this is alpha deprotonation you see because this uh, this is the metal this carbon is the alpha carbon this hydrogen is the alpha hydrogen and we are extracting this hydrogen as the proton so this is alpha deprotonation reaction okay but remember the for this alpha deprotonation reaction uh, uh if if you want to do this alpha deprotonation reaction your transition metal must be in the high oxidation state very high oxidation state okay you should remember now say next uh, next method is your alpha hydrogen elimination reaction alpha hydrogen elimination reaction this is another beautiful way of synthesizing the schrock carbides schrock carbides rather okay so in that case uh, you will take dmpe okay i hope you know what is the dmpe so this is phosphorus having two methyl here also your phosphorus this is bis uh, 1 comma 2 uh, so, so this uh, bis 1 comma 2 dimethyl phosphine ligand actually right or uh, for phos phosphorus ethane actually right because this is carbon number 1 this is carbon number 2 okay you should know uh, the type of the ligand it's a type of the ligand actually it is a ligand dmp ligand i have already uh, made a lecture on this so uh, what can happen in that case say you are having this tantalum here and say you are having the two halogens over there and say chlor say br is there okay let me write it clearly little bit clearly so this is br this is br these are the good leaving group actually this is cyclopentadienyl anion this is double bond carbon and this is hydrogen and in that case this is cme3 three methyls are there on the carbon atom so in that case what can happen right this is something very very important 
says uh, this hydrogen uh, can be grabbed by this metal and this bond will shift here. So, this is alpha hydrogen elimination. So, in the alpha hydrogen elimination, whatever the coordinated hydrogen is there right in the alkylidene group. So, this is alkylidene group ok. It this would be transferred to the transition metals ok right. Uh, however, it is also the proton type of the reaction, but this actually will not remove from here, but it will be trans it will be transferred to this uh, particular tantalum metal. While in the previous reaction you can see here uh, what had happened actually this hydrogen is actually taken away by the by this particular salt. You can see here the hydrogen which was there it was taken away by this reacting species and hydrogen has removed from here, but in that case you see your hydrogen will be transferred to the tantalum atom. That is why the name is alpha hydrogen elimination reaction or rather you can say the alpha hydrogen transfer reaction right instead of elimination reaction you should say you should call that reaction in that manner also ok. And say you are using in that case say I am using DMPE phosphorus base ligand and I am doing the reduction I am talking this condition. So, it is a reduction also you know the alkali metals are they are the very good reducing agents ok. So, these are the uh, this is the reducing agent metal in the mercury ok and then your shock uh, actually form this particular compound tantalum triple bond carbon ok and this carbon is here and this is CME3 and in that case this is your CP cyclopentadienyl ok and then say this is your hydrogen and then it resulted in C phosphorus is here, phosphorus is here and these two phosphorus are having methyl and the methyl ok. So, these methyls are there. So, I can write it at write it as M E, M E and M E. So, this complex actually it has resulted ok. So, this is how you can draw this particular complex. So, uh, Schrock uh, in uh, 1980 made this particular reaction. So, this is something very very important. So, the electron requirement for this reaction would come from this uh, this sodium actually right sodium in this uh, then your ligand will actually substitute this these two bromines. So, what actually had happened here in that case the two bromines which are there ok. So, it is actually quite good if I write this in that manner. In that manner if I write ok. So, the two of the bromine they are substituted by the two carbons right you know the one carbon is here and another carbon is here ok. So, this is one carbon this is another carbon. So, they form the bond with this one and uh, rest is the uh, your ligand part actually. So, this is something very very important very important reaction and then you may go for the another uh, uh, reaction say metathesis reaction meta thesis reaction. So, these alkene meta thesis reactions are very very important in case of the organometallic chemistry ok. I will do uh, that part also right. So, what are the meta thesis reaction? In the meta thesis reaction two hydrocarbons whether they are they the two alkenes are there or two alkynes are there or the two alkanes are there they are converted into the new uh, hydrocarbons ok and in that case uh, the uh, bond will actually exchange ok whether double bond single bond and triple bond. So, these actually and these reactions are catalyzed by the metal also you should know. So, for example, you are having this particular complex say you are having tungsten triple bond tungsten and then you are having ter O tertiary butyl over there. So, I can write O tertiary butyl O tertiary butyl. Similarly, this will also have O tertiary butyl O tertiary butyl and O tertiary butyl you are having these things ok <coughs> and you are reacting this with say some other alkyne R 
C triple bond C R. So it is say this is alkyne. You can write alkyne one, and this triple bond you can also treat as alkyne. Okay, so you can write say ine two. So this is ine, and this is again ine. So that means two triple bond are actually uh, going under this reaction. So definitely, what will happen? It will result another kind of the hydrocarbon, right? So what will happen? See, in that case, the trick is that you remove one of this part from here. You remove this particular part and write that part as such. How? Tungsten. Okay, and that tungsten is having all the way tertiary butyl groups. O tertiary butyl, O tertiary butyl. You are having this one, and it is having the triple bond. You can write in that manner. Okay, and another hydrocarbon part is actually what, which is this one. So you can write C and R. So what basically you are having, you are having two fragments of this. One fragment is this one, another fragment is this one. It is all you are having two fragments here, fragment one and fragment two. So what will happen? They will form the two of such units actually. Okay. So this is something very very important. This is another very uh, beautiful method uh, by uh, to produce these uh, uh, these your uh, um, carbines, carbine complexes. Okay. So tungsten in that case uh, is there. So you can classify this compound as the Fischer uh, carbine. So how it is actually the Fischer one? Okay. So C R is there. So you can see th there is a problem in that. You, you cannot actually uh, sometimes you may have the doubt whether it is the Fischer or the Schrock kind of the carbine. So you you should go for the oxidation states also. When your tungsten is in two oxidation state, okay, then it is your Fischer carbines. And when your tungsten is in six oxidation state, so it is Schrock carbines. Okay, it is your Schrock carbines. So always go for this one. This is a little trick which you should know actually. So now you may see a very important example here. Say you are having this particular carbine. Say this is tungsten. This tungsten is triply bonded with the carbon. Okay. And also double bond with this carbon. Okay, so in that say if you are having this one, and here you are having the CME three. In that case, and this carbon is having another CME three. This is very beautiful example, very important example, which you always uh, keep in mind actually. Right, you are having this one, and this tungsten is attached with this here. Say this is CME three. And then you are having phosphorus over there, so I can write phosphorus here. This is phosphorus. This is phosphorus. It is having two methyl and two methyl. See, you are having this particular structure. So this this uh, why this compound is special because this compound is having tungsten, triple bond carbon. tungsten double bond carbon and tungsten single bond carbon right and you know when bond order increases right then carbonyl stretching frequency nu also increases nu also increases this you should actually remember bond order increases then your carbon then your stretching frequency also increases so in that case what can happen actually uh, this is triple bond so it should have the very high uh, stretching frequency right it should have the very high stretching frequency and uh, bond order uh, uh, would be high in that case and of course bond length would be low so here you can see i can write bond length low so in that case you should have the lowest bond length carbon triple bond uh, tungsten and this bond length is uh, say somewhere around 175 degree it is found like that right it is uh, nearly actually 180 degree but exactly by x ray diffraction method 
it actually uh, calculated as 175 degrees. So, it is it is nearly linear not exactly, but line, nearly linear. Okay. So, th this this is the angle it is okay, sorry what I did. Instead of writing this 175 degree here, uh, I should write this here 175 degree. Okay. And if I am talking about the lengths, right. So, this carbon triple bond, this is somewhere around 178 picometer. Okay. And this carbon double bond, this is it should be little bit greater. So, it is 194 picometer and single bond you know it is uh, the lowest uh, bond order. So, it should have the highest bond length. Okay. So, for this single bond the bond length is actually quite high hmm? and that was uh, 225 picometer. So, this actually your 225 picometer and this was your 194 picometer and this was your 178 picometer. It is a very, very beautiful example and if you go for the uh, tungsten and carbon stretching frequency for this you will have the highest stretching frequency and for this you will have the lowest stretching frequency. Okay. This is something very, very important. Now, very quickly you can go for some of the reactions of the carbines reactions. So, what are those reactions actually? So, first of all I already told you your Fisher carbine say if I am talking about the Fisher carbine Fisher carbines. So, you know the Fisher in Fisher carbines your carbon is what? electrophilic in nature, when this carbon is electrophilic in nature, so any actually your nucleophile can attack over it, nucleophile can attack on this carbine carbon okay. and you know the various nucleophiles you are having, say you are having PME 3 nucleus loving species PME 3 okay. and then uh, you may have your pyridine also along with the pyridine see your alkali metals also you can have your isonitride also. So, this can attack on the carbon car, your uh, carbon carbine carbon to produce the carbenes. Okay. So, how the reaction goes say for example, I am giving you this particular reaction say this is chromium triple bond carbon this is R over there and say these are the carbonyls I can write in that manner and say this is your halogen X. I am writing halogen for this one. So, this is P M E 3 okay. and that carbi carbyl carbon is electrophilic in nature. right? So, what can happen? This can attack over there on this carbon and the electron pair will go to the chromium and you will have this species X. 4 times carbonyl. Now, chromium would be negative side because it has received the electron from the carbine carbon. This is P M E 3 positive over there because it has lost one electron pair in the formation of the bond. This is R. So, this is one of the reaction. Okay. So, what you did actually you made this carbine into carbene conversion of carbine into carbene. So, there are various kinds of the reaction which you can do in that manner. Okay. Similarly, say you can you may take this particular example also say this is cyclopentadienyl NIN this two carbonyls are there this is manganese and carbon this is carbine complex okay. and what you can do so it is in cationic form say positive is over there and you are reacting this with say methyl lithium you know this carbon is negative this is positive. Okay. So, what can happen this Me can attack over there and th this can shift over there. Okay. So, you will have here carbene. 
So, how this is CO. two times along with the cp you are having okay and then you are having the manganese double bond carbon this is me and me now you see the methyl is there methyl is there and you are having the late transition metal right so it, it this uh, should be your fisher type of the carbene okay but you can go for the oxidation state also cp is also the co is also there so it is looking like the fisher uh, like uh, carbene though it is not having the any heteroatom so you should be careful where, uh, while deciding the nature whether whether it is shrock or the fisher carbene you have to apply all the concept it is not like that you are looking for the heteroatom and you are not finding the heteroatom and you are quickly jumping into the shrock carbene no it is not like that you have to apply all the concepts over there okay so then uh, another reaction say reductive dimerization reductive dimerization so what this uh, what this uh, reductive dimerization is say uh, in that in that case actually your uh, your carbine actually will dimerize into the carbenes okay so and reduction will also takes place in that case say this is your carbonyl five times and you are having the chromium and triple bond carbon this is your fisher carbine net okay say you are having this particular fisher carbine why fisher because nitrogen is over there heteroatom and this chromium is there hmm? and since you are doing the reduction you can take your sodium not not sodium alone you can take along with this pme2 right sodium will do the trick actually so this this actually will dimerize so how it will dimerize what you can do you can you can write this fragment here carbon double bond chromium and this carbon is having this n et2 there is no problem and this is having co5 so this is the one fragment if you if you check so this part is actually your one fragment okay and this will dimerize so how it will dimerize so it's quite easy so you can put one carbon over there and then n et2 double bond chromium okay co five times this is how you can form so dimerization is also taking place another very important reaction and next reaction say is the reaction number 4 this is actually carbon carbon coupling base is used so i can write base induced carbon carbon coupling to form or to give here say a ketenyl compounds ketenyl compounds a very important reaction okay how you can form say this is your cyclopentadienyl along with the two of the carbonyls and this is chromium family member and you see again it is your fisher carbine and when this react with this pme3 so here actually the ketenyl compound will form how ketenyl compound will form say this is cp okay this is one of the co and then here molybdenum and this will have actually your pme3 over there and pme3 over there okay definitely now it would be here single bond carbon and this phenyl so what will happen in that case one of the co okay will actually transfer to this carbon so when it transfer to this particular carbon so you can write double bond c double bond o so this is your ketenyl moiety ketene type of things right ketene you know uh, the uh, ketone part along with the double bond this is something very very important reaction okay 
this is important now your next reaction say a conversion of your say reaction number 5 i suppose it was 5 yes it is 5 conversion of the carbine to the carbido complex carbine to carbido complex another very important reaction so if uh, for this reaction say for example you are having molybdenum here and you are having this carbon along with the hydrogen over there and here say your n r a r and this is your n r a r and another n r a r right say this compound is given the important thing is that whenever you want to convert your carbine complex into your see into your see this is molybdenum into your carbido complex so important thing is that so this is molybdenum guys this is remember you should remember remember this point okay and here this hydrogen must be necessary whenever your alkyne part is having the hydrogen only then you can convert your carbine into carbido complex and this uh, these carbido complexes are very important they plays a very important role in the synthesis of the transition metal uh, organometallic compound that's why i'm giving you this particular reaction okay and in that case say you have taken this thing okay or if you want then you can write in that manner ch2k positive negative in that manner okay and also you have taken benzo Fifteen crown ether or crown five. This actually traps potassium. It will trap the potassium. Okay, and it will result in the final product, which is your molybdenum, triple bond carbon, and negative charge. And all things remains the same. Okay, these things are. already there in that manner so this is actually your carbido complex this is something very very important and you should remember this point in that case your ar is actually this part me me and me and your r is so so this is me this is me this is the vacant valency this is not me this is vacant valency okay and and uh, this is tertiary butyl so this r is actually your tertiary butyl so this is very important reaction okay carb for uh, synthesis of the carbido complex so this is how you can go uh, the various kinds of the reactions okay and uh, then uh, say if i want to take one more reaction say reaction number 6 so you know if if you take your schrock carbine say tungsten triple bond carbon and say three methyls are there in this way okay and you are having tertiary butyl o three times in that manner okay and uh, since uh, you know this is actually your uh, schrock kind of the carbine okay right? why schrock carbine with uh, this actually is a uh, high oxidation state you should remember this one okay and say you are having hcl okay so this is you know positive this is negative and you know this carbine carbon in that case is nucleophilic so when it is a nucleophilic what can happen see this can come here and this can grab your hydrogen and when this will grab your hydrogen your product would be tertiary butyl oxide three times tungsten double bond carbon now and along with the hydrogen so you can write methyl here you can write methyl here you can write methyl there okay and then cl are also there so you can put two of the chlorine so this is another complex okay 
but remember this electrophile can also attack on the uh, metal also okay so this is something very very important and sometimes you may also convert your uh, fischer carbines into the schrock carbines so another very important reaction so i'm writing here conversion of fischer carbines to schrock carbines this is very special example very special say for example you are having br co4 tungsten is there triple bond carbon and say one me is over there and this is the this is your compound actually okay so uh, this is actually your fischer carbine so why does the fischer carbine because here tungsten is in lower oxidation state 2 okay and in that case you are taking this br2 oxidizing agent this br2 is the oxidizing agent okay and then you are having this ligand you are having this particular ligand okay and see this is your oxidizing agent and this is the donor this is donor so it will result in this particular complex br3 tungsten triple bond carbon me and this tungsten now linked with the two oxygens okay in that manner see you know this is a very strong donor very strong electron donor when compared to the carbonyl okay and when uh, this reaction happens actually so your carbonyl will go from there and it will give you this particular complex this is actually your schrock carbine why because in that case tungsten is in higher oxidation state you should remember this one see the six i think okay oxidation six actually let me check it whether it is six or something else yes it is in six oxidation state okay so uh, instead of having this late transition metals all these things this oxidation state actually decides the fischer and the schrock carbine this is something very very important so you should remember this particular point this uh, br actually is the oxidizing agent will which will oxidize this tungsten by the two units and when this will oxidize it will destabilize uh, the d pi orbitals uh, of the metal relative to this carbon p orbital okay so that's why the polarity switches uh, between the multiple bonds okay now the last thing which i want to explain in that case the ir spectroscopy and the carbonyl stretching frequency say for example so i'm writing ir spectroscopy say you are having the tungsten triple bond carbon and this is your ph and say this is your pme3 this is cl another cl which is trans to this one and then you are having say pme3 here and here you are having co okay say you are having this particular complex this is something very very important so this is carbine and say instead of carbine if you have your carbene tungsten double bond carbon this is hydrogen this is phenyl okay and say this is my carbonyl this is pme3 and this is cl and this is another cl okay now if you go for the carbonyl stretching frequency for this one nu of co so in that case that nu co is 1870 cm inverse okay and in that case 
your new CO is in higher side, 1938 centimeter inverse. This is something very, very important which you should know actually. So, uh, what it means actually, what it, what it shows that this carbine ligand, this carbine ligand, I am writing carbine ligand is better electron donor. Whenever the electron donation capacity of the carbine is good, then carbonyl stretching frequency goes down. So, what is the meaning of that? Say, this will increase the electron density over there. It will donate the electron over there, right? And this electron will come to this particular point and the triple bond would go in that manner. So, if I uh, draw a part of this one, so how I can draw? Say, I, have, I was having my carbon triple bond tungsten, okay? And that tungsten is linked with the carbonyl. Say, this fragment I have drawn. So, what can happen? This will give the electron density here and that electron density will go there and this will come here. So, what it will result actually? So, it will result what? Carbon, double bond tungsten, double bond carbon and double bond oxygen. So, here you see the bond order decreases. When bond order decreases, then also carbonyl frequency decreases. New CO decreases. So, uh, this this is having the lower value of 1870. But remember, if you if you if you are looking for the tungsten carbon double bond, so in that case, bond order increases, but tungsten double bond carbon new also increases. Okay. So, this is how you can understand the things, very important, very important thing. Okay. So, uh, but in that case, you see uh, this, uh, this is actually in the, in the higher side. So, what will happen? This uh, carbon triple bond oxygen nature is not changing so much. So, you can decide uh, which one is the better donor and uh, which one uh, is not among uh, between your carbine and the uh, carbene. Uh, ligands. So, carbine is the better ligand donor because it decreases the carbonyl stretching frequency. Okay. So, uh, these are the things which you should know uh, about your uh, carbine complexes. So, I have done the Fisher carbine complexes as well as Fisher and the Schrock carbine complexes and now the Fisher and the Schrock carbine complexes. Okay. I hope you like the lecture. So, if you like the lecture, please uh, subscribe the Tetrahedron Chemistry classes and do share with your friends also. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much.